I left when I was a little kid. Um, you know, I came to the U.S. when I was around eight, nine years of age. And where I grew up, it was a rough neighborhood. You know, it's called East San Diego. And it was, you know, when I got there, um, obviously being somebody of a different background in, a, in, in the ghetto, it wasn't easy. Um, the first day I went to school, uh, my mom sent me like a nice suit because she thought, you know, America and everybody's rich and like that. So imagine you're in the barrio and the ghetto and you go to school in a suit with that. And, and I came from the UK before this. So I had a British accent. I was like, hello. Oh, My name no. is Usman. Oh, no. <laughs> so the first day was fights. Right you try to turn back. the volume. But yeah. If there's any way to. But yeah, get in there. Yeah. So you know what we did is, uh, I mean, I just went into school and uh, the first day I got, I got, I got tested and and you know my father raised me with this mindset of never being afraid. He wasn't. He was a strong figure. My mother raised me with this you know idea of don't back down. So the first day was fights. You know, I got back home. Suit was all ripped, clothes, big old black eye, you know. <laughs> my mom was like, what happened? I was like, you sent me to school in a suit, you know. This is welcome to America, right? right. So, you know. You lost the accent completely. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, growing up, it's just, you know, we kind of, I grew up with all Mexicans, mostly, you know. Because yeah. that neighborhood was heavily Latino. Chad, I want to show you the picture that uh, Shea Guzman sent me of him back in, what was it, the 80s or 90s? 95. You look like yeah, a Mexican 90, dude. 94. You look yeah, like yeah. a cholo, uh, stereotypical <laughs> beaner from like the 90s movies in L.A. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this up a little. If you could like clip that higher up, so closer to your. Yeah, I think that'd be better. Okay. Yeah, that's good. All right, um, maybe here. Uh, here. No, um, like clip it to the oh, to okay. the best. There you go. So yeah, you were showing me some pictures. Like you're pointing the gun. How did you go from being like this gang member, California guy, so, boys in the hood, to? So the way it happened is, I I had a friend. Uh, he was Iranian, but he was he was Christian. Um, and when I was about 12 years of age, uh, he got into a fight with these cholos. And these were like older, three big guys. So cholos, that's not a racial slur? No, that's a gang member. Okay, okay. Uh, Beaner's a racial slur. Oh, but, <laughs> well, uh, but we're in rubble, so it's all right. Yeah, right? it's okay. Um, w Beaners. We love everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, cholos are this basically a name for Mexican gang members, right? Okay. Um, so these guys were gang members, and they, they got in a fight with him. I, you know, having this honor mindset, I jumped in for him, and he ran. <laughs> so I got jumped. You know? oh, no. And when I got jumped, uh, my father, my parents were divorced at the time. Uh, my parents were very secular. Like, they didn't raise me with, like, a religious mindset. Uh, my father came to see me, and my mom was freaked out. She was a great mother. She was worried. So uh, she told my father, look, he got in a fight. Look, he's, you know, this. Big old back eye, busted lip, all that, you know, so my father, he called me and he said, look, did you cry? I said, no. He said, did you run? I said, no. He said, that's all I care about. And he grabbed a baseball bat and he grabbed me and said, let's go find him. <laughs> and he used to have this Camaro, you know. So we're out there looking for these guys. With the baseball bat. With the baseball bat. And there's a, gangs always have places where they hang out. Like there's a corner, there's a street. Like in LA, you have a gang called White Fence because they used to hang out at a white fence, you know. We have a gang in San Diego called Red Steps because where they hung out were Red Steps, you know. So these guys uh, from a gang called Lomas here in San Diego, uh, my father found them. And my father was like, that's the guys, you know. And my father pulled up, he got out of the bat, he hit one of them, broke the other guy's shoulder, you know, hit the other guy on the head. So, you know, we got him. But then my father went back to his house and I had to go to school the next day. Right. So at 12 years of age, you know, I, I went to school and they were like, bro, that gang's going to kill you. And there's no way you're going to live through this, right? So another gang called Eastside San Diego here in San Diego, it's called Sureño, like Southern Mexican gangs. They were like, look, if you want to survive, you join us, we'll protect you. you know? So that's how I got in. I mean, was, I wasn't trying to be cool. I wasn't trying to fit in. I wasn't doing it for it was protection. Clout. I had to, it's survival, right? So at 12 years of age, I joined a gang. And then, you know, in the gang world, you know, especially if you can plan things well, if you can do things, you move up fast, right? So we were all young guys, uh, you know, East San Diego is around 600 people strong gang. It's uh, still around. I mean, I don't, I don't keep up with them. Uh, but we got into a lot of stuff. I mean, we started dealing with the cartels. So, you know, Tijuana's right next to us. So we would go down to TJ and meet with the cartel guys. And, you know, I don't want to get myself too much in trouble. But, right. you know, we got involved with bringing drugs and distribution. So you matured pretty quickly. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it was, uh, it was rough. Um, I had a lot of friends. I had a very good friend of mine that I grew up with here in Hoover High School. Um, this gang member from LA came down 
So, you know, we were San Diegans. We didn't like L.A. L.A. didn't like us. So, and he was, you know, he was alone. So, we were like, let's go mess with him, you know. So, the guy started beating him up after school. And I was like, yeah, he's just one guy. Forget it, you know. So, one of my friends started, like, really getting into with him. So, he started running. So, my friend, his name was Diablo. They called him Diablo. They started chasing him. And the guy turned around and just stuck him with a screwdriver in the chest. And I remember, you know, watching them run, the guy running him. And then I just remember, like, the guy turned and then I saw my friend just drop. And I ran up there, uh, you know, and um, I picked him up. And he was bleeding out, you know. And uh, he died right, right there in my arms. Um, like that. I mean, that's why, like, I would tell the young guys, you know, the gang world that you see on TV is not the reality, right? We would we would go through some stuff, you know, stuff that I never talked about for many years because it's rough. You know, we, we used to go to the cartel guys, and I remember till today, um, I went on the, the base, you know, they have their own compounds, and there's a smell, you know, and I, I couldn't place what that smell was. And basically, they had these big drums where they would put a person in there and light them up and burn them up alive. And when you smell that smell, uh, you'll never forget it. You know, so got involved with a lot of really, really, you know, we 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 regularly, you know, we'd be in school and I was trying to get good grades, you know, because my parents always had this idea. And then you'd be sitting there, another gang, 30, 40, 60 guys would just rush to school. Security couldn't do anything. My middle school had a police officer that was there full-time middle school we had metal detectors uh, it's called wilson middle school in san diego and middle school this is sixth seventh eighth there was a drive-by during school time and that's the kind of environment i grew up with were, were you still muslim at the time or did you have or did you leave i, I don't know how I, those two things i never left coexist. islam uh i was muslim in the sense that my parents told me you're muslim but we weren't practicing in the sense, I mean, you know, we didn't really pray regularly. We didn't fast regularly. Uh, I didn't go to any mosques. I didn't have any Muslim friends or community or all my friends were not Muslim. Um, I went to church regularly, uh, but I never went to a mosque growing up. And the reason I went to church, because most Mexicans are either Catholic or some Christian. So a lot of times the parents would put us in these Bible studies to try to fix us you know so I still remember going to a confession you know because we used, a lot of my friends were Catholic so you'd go in and it'd be like you go into this little room and this guy would be you know behind the mesh and he'd be like forgive me father for I have sinned you know I stabbed a guy last week and and then forgive you so then, then the funny thing is that they would be like oh well, say these many Hail Marys donate and don't do it again and he'd be like you know we're gonna do it again we're gang members this is what we do right, right. and he'd be like well see you next week <laughs> <laughs> like you're yeah. forgiven, you know. You walk out, you're 